My name is Tracy Metz. I'm the host of the live talk show and web magazine Stadsleven, City Life. Stadsleven is about urban issues. Over 50% of the world's population lives in cities now, and the issues confronting them are urgent and relevant, and will get even more so for a much larger portion of the world's population. This is part of a series of video interviews with, among others, Saskia Sossen, Richard Sennett, Evgeny Morozov, and Charles Montgomery. Today I'm speaking with Enrique Peñalosa, who between 1998 and 2001 was the mayor of Bogota in Colombia and a great champion of public parks, green spaces, and public transportation for a more egalitarian society. You can watch the entire series of interviews on our site, www.stadsleveamsterdam.nl. Welcome, Mr. Enrique Peñalosa, to this video talk for Stadsleve, our series of interviews with urban thinkers. You were the mayor of Bogota from 1998 to 2001, and you may again become the mayor of Bogota. The elections are in October 2015. That's possible. I'm sitting here in Amsterdam looking outside at one of the canals where the bikes are whizzing by. And you always said that Amsterdam is one of the most just cities in the world because people of all income levels bicycle here. Yes, and I think one of the main uh, functions of a city is to create inclusion, uh, is to make people feel equal, not to feel in inferior or excluded. And of course, we cannot have income equality. But uh, a good city gets rich and poor people to meet as equals in many spaces. In bicycles, for example, that's one. In public transport, in sidewalks, in parks, in cultural activities. Uh, but clearly, to me, bicycles are a, a symbol of uh, equality. Moreover, I would say that in the Netherlands, uh, people use more bicycles because it's a more egalitarian society. It has always been for hundreds of years. So, and, but on the other hand, a city which makes space for bicycles and creates bicycle infrastructure also creates a lot of equality, especially in very unequal developing country cities. I think uh, a protected bikeway is at least as important because it shows a citizen on a $30 bicycle is equally important to one on a $100,000 car as, as, as it is because it protects, protects the bike bicyclists. In a, a protected bikeway increases the social status of the cyclist. You, uh, one of your uh, main points as the mayor of Bogota was the role of transportation in making your city more just. And that includes bicycles, but I know that the bus rapid transit system was one of your most important agendas. Yes, uh, transportation uh, has a lot to do with uh, justice and equality because it has to do with the distribution of uh, road space. Road space is probably the most valuable resource, physical resource a city has. We could find oil or diamonds under a city and it would not be as valuable as road space. The question is how to distribute that road space between pedestrians, bicyclists, public transport and cars. Uh, and in developing countries, which are so unjust, of course, the minority who are car owners, they, they feel they are more important of a higher class than other citizens. So uh, it is a prowess. It's very difficult just to get cars off the sidewalks. To get, to get sidewalks is already difficult. I was almost impeached for getting tens of thousands of cars off sidewalks. Then to make space for, for bicyclists, I think to have a protected bikeway is not a cute architectural feature, it is a right. Unless we think only those with a motor vehicle have a right to 
safe mobility without the risk of getting killed. And then BRT, and then BRT the bus system, is also a basic democracy. Clearly, if all citizens are equal, as it's stated in all constitutions, then clearly a bus with 100 passengers has a right to 100 times more road space than a car with one. When you have the expensive cars stuck in traffic, not moving, and the bus zooms by next to them, it's almost a picture of democracy in action. It's very, different, it's very different than if you put people on the ground in a subway, because upper-income people, they love to put the lower-income people on the ground uh, in subways. And that, that's maybe very good for mobility, but it's not uh, a powerful democratic symbol. Amsterdam is building a subway now, eh? Yes, of course. It's, uh, it's good uh, to have subways, but I think before you build subways, you should use road space in a democratic way. You should give priority to buses. I would say sometimes we have inequality in front of our noses, and we do not see it. For example, less than 100 years ago, women could not vote in the Netherlands or in France or in England. And everybody thought this was perfectly, perfectly fine. Nobody thought there was anything wrong with this because we were so used to this. At this time, I would say that to have a bus stuck in traffic is almost as undemocratic as not allowing women to vote. It's completely irrational. A bus should always have exclusive right of way or a tram or whatever you want to use. One of your uh, uh, statements in the TED talk that you gave was that transportation gets worse as society gets richer, whereas other systems like education and healthcare get better as society gets richer. How could this happen? Yes, this is a very peculiar thing with transportation because most problems tend to get solved as societies get richer. Uh, but transport uh, with the kind of model that we have today, which means car-based transportation, gets worse. Because as society gets richer, people have more cars, they use more cars, and it becomes chaos. Uh, so uh, it's very also very, very interesting because is not solved, is a problem that is not solved simply with money. You can invest all the money you want in roads or making double deck highways or whatever, and still you will have traffic jams. The only way to change, the only way to solve mobility is to change our behavior, to get rich people to use public transport or bicycles next to the lower income people which is very easy to do in the Netherlands, where it's a very egalitarian society it has always been, but it's very difficult to do in developing country cities where the upper income people think they are of a higher uh, status of, uh, than lower income citizens. Does this approach make you an activist mayor in the tradition of Ken Livingston and uh, Michael Bloomberg? Well, I think we did many of those things much before Michael Bloomberg and Ken Livingston. <laughs> Because when we did more than 300 kilometers of protected bikeways, there were no bikeways in New York or in London. Uh, and when we did the BRT, there was no BRT in New York or in London. Uh, but uh, the important issue is uh, that when you talk, uh, mention the word activist, I think there is something implied is that many of these uh, changes to make cities better also means to make cities more democratic, more egalitarian. And this implies conflict. Even in New York, even in New York, most people, most higher income people use cars and lower income people use public transport. So even in advanced societies such as New York or in London. So there, there is always a huge difficulty in, when we try to restrict car use 
and to make more space for human beings, for children, for the handicapped, for the elderly, for the lower income citizens. So I think when you talk about activists, uh, this war has charged that when we are talking about making a city, it's not just a matter of urban design. A city model is a, a, a means to a way of life. And it has a lot of issues relating related to equality, to social justice. Uh, and so always it's very difficult to give this battle, to restrict car use, to give more space to human beings. Because in general, the most powerful people in society somehow, they have a way to use their cars. Uh, and the lower income people, even if they have a car, for example, they do not have parking at work, so they have to use public transport. So uh, many of these things uh, have to do with creating a city that is more just. And there are many other issues, not just about transport. Democracy, it means that public good prevails over private interest. And so even you have to use eminent domain sometimes in order to have to use expropriation, such as was used in London to create the Olympic site. Uh, so maybe some of this, if we really had democracy in these cities with very few parks and golf courses, which have tax exemptions, maybe these golf courses should be turned into public parks and many other things, for example, there should never be private waterfronts, especially not near a city. Be for example, the Long Island Sound in the New York, you have these big mansions with private waterfronts. Clearly, if democracy existed, then public goods should prevail over private interests, and we should have hundreds of kilometers of public waterfronts with walkways, uh, bikeways, etc. So this is a, the issue of equity is not just in transport. So equity for you is the driver of urban design and not, the, not just the, the design itself. Is a livable city by definition also a just city? Well, what is interesting, this, this kind of wars that become sort of uh, fashionable, what is interesting is that uh, if we try to make a city that is more equitable, we try to give priority to bicycles, to public transport, for example, but then this is also a city that is more sustainable environmentally. And it's also a city that is more livable. So all of these things end up uh, being the same. There is not, not only, there is no contradiction between making a city for people and no contradiction with making a city more equitable and no contradiction with making a city more environmentally sustainable. But on the contrary, if you seek to achieve these goals, you end up in the same solution. Last question. Uh, there was a lovely interview with you in the book, uh, The Happy City by Charles Montgomery. Uh, you had a hard time as mayor. You were almost impeached. There was a lot of conflict. You're still going back for another run as mayor. Is Bogota now a happy city? No. I think Bogota has deteriorated very much. We are only learning. I think all over the world, we are only learning to make cities. And I think the developing world is missing a huge opportunity because in the developing world, we are creating new cities from scratch to a large extent in India or in Indonesia. And we could create cities that are totally different and better. For example, every other street could be just for pedestrians and bicyclists or we could have hundreds of kilometers of greenways crisscrossing the city in all directions. So you could go across cities uh, by bicycle through a tree-covered greenway. So uh, Bogota uh, 
we have many problems. We have crime. We don't have enough green spaces. But we have learned a little. We have learned a little. I think in Bogota, everybody accepts, accepts that public transport should have priority over cars and the buses should have exclusive lanes. We all agree with now that we should have protected bikeways in, in most streets. So we are learning. Well, Mr. Peñalosa, I wish you great luck with the next elections and keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank good you very to, much. Good to hear you.